Hello everybody and welcome to the best person that you know in technology and streaming, Fake Muse, who absolutely has a complete control of everything that he does intentionally and gets everything done absolutely perfectly the first time around. Which is why I decided to change my formatting on today's stream and we're doing this as a post-mortem analysis of my round of a TS tournament broadcast. This is to increase viewers your pleasure. This is not a situation where I rebooted my computer, hypothetically Streamlabs forgot my microphone on the sound settings, and, and hypothetically I didn't notice it until after the, the games have already been recorded and then I was trying to upload the video and then noticed that there was no sound and now I'm having to do this re-recording to add sound to the video to make it somewhat watchable. That is obviously not the situation. This is 100% intentional. It's not like every time I reboot my computer, I forget that Streamlabs just forgets my microphone for absolutely no reason. I have, I, th this is obviously not the situation. But I have my viewers in mind and want to provide the best possible content possible. So you're going to get two Muse in one frame. You'll get the me reacting in the bottom left hand to my original plays. And then me in the top right hand, the original broadcast being shown. And it is, that, that, that's, how, that's how it's going to function. So you can see my face as it was going, and you can see my face as I'm reacting, and then double the muse for, for the same price, you're, the, the $0 you're paying. So you get what you paid for. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into game number one. I just wanted to get that little speech out of the way because you're going to notice this is a different format from our prior videos. So let's go ahead, go to scene, hit the play button. The original video had no sound. And you can see here, we're queuing into game one. We get an error 311. I've been getting that error a lot recently. I don't know what it means. I think that I think the reason why error 311 comes up is because I have diamond cards in my deck. And when I run diamond cards, apparently it, it like bugs everything. So we have no idea. I'm playing Deception, so I'm going to pick Orpheo's Distraction. I'm playing a Hidden Rush variant of Deception that is explosive. It is basically, it's ideal to do a lot of damage to face. It doesn't run as many of the Strength Steel cards as a lot of the metal list around. So I want to get some big things. We've got right there a Switch Duelist and a Selfless Skilled Mate. Now, the one thing to keep in mind in this matchup is you have... Theric Extortionist, which is the Light's Levy that's legal. Light's Levy itself is illegal. And you also have Ukos and Eclipse. The reason why I'm worried about Ukos and Eclipse is because they picked the Heal Gob power, it makes me think that they're more likely to be playing Control Light than Aggro Light. So I have, the, I have multiple lines that I can play here. There's a lot of options. I think the best one is just to play Switch Duelist and pass turn. It's tempting to slap down a Sparrow. It's tempting to slap down a Switch, a Selfless Skill Mate. However, if he's got Ukos and Eclipse, he knows you know he's going to keep that in his opening hand against Deception. So you really need to be careful and you really need to play around it. And just by spilling out all my one drops, all of them die to the card. So Armor Lurker is another card that dies to the card that I'm afraid of. So I'm going to play Lady Marcella, which produces two minions that die to the card that I'm afraid of. <laughs> Everything gets wrecked by Ukos and Eclipse, but this gets wrecked slightly less because I still have Lady Marcella on the board. They had the card that I thought they had, but I did a good job of not giving up my Sparrow or Selfless Skilled Mate or any of that. I just... I lose these two tokens from Lady Marcella and the Switch Duelist. So I've really lost about one and a half cards for one. It felt like they got a lot of value, but did they really? You see them here. I, I'm no longer afraid. <laughs> if he's got a second Ukos and Eclipse, then that's really tough. Figure the odds are that he doesn't. And I've got to push damage because the late game, I don't win. When they're playing the Heal God Power and a Control Light List, you know in the late game they will beat you. They go ahead and obliterate my Lady Marcella, which is an interesting line. Because normally you like to kill those for the Afterlife minions, but I guess with the Ukos and Eclipse, that ship had already sailed. 
we're gonna go ahead here with the avatar of deception just trying to go wide trying to apply pressure get as much damage in early as possible because we know the late game is not going to go to us our opponent here is going to hang here on the rope just a tad got to live life on the rope and come up with decisions obviously that's a kind of a cringeworthy decision playing extortionist on a 1-1 they would have wanted to get better value than that but they did not so they're going to be upset about that so here what i'm thinking is a lot of times they're going to give tons of things order and it's a slightly awkward spot now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab the card shark in the sanctum. The reason being is it's the best card against me. Does it really accomplish much for me in my position right now? No, it, it doesn't accomplish much for me exactly. But it does slow them down a tad. And also I don't want them to have frontline in the sanctum because frontline in the sanctum is a way to potentially prevent lethal for me later. If you play one card shark and play one other frontline minion, I can't use my god power on both. So here, they kill the card shark. We card shark one one token. We knew that was going to happen. And they make it so I can't attack. So that is a bundle of fun. Now the the timing of this is important because we know that usually control light is trying to set up. Lysander's Mercy. So I actually have them on a second line in the sand, which is a really weird read that I have. But if I expand wider, then I, I just get hit with the inevitable Lysander's Mercy. I think that they're probably going to keep stalling me. There, there is the card that gives, or th th they're going to be playing defense. We've already got seven points of damage between the Avatar of Deception and Armor Lurker if they're not able to have any tricks, though. So, so you could have argued expanding wider there. However, we're being conservative, knowing that we're probably going to get board wiped. It is inevitable. They grab the Athenian Archer, which is an, an interesting Sanctum play because I would have thought the Rune of Life would have been the primary go-to for them. And they go ahead and drop the Highborn Knight. So since they played Highborn Knight, I feel like I need to add a tad bit of pressure. We can get around it with our God Power and Sling 7 to the face to put them at 7. I felt that this was the best line. We are three favor away from buying the Vow of Champions. That is the best card in the Sanctum. And they would need to accumulate 9, 11 favor. <laughs> Math, right? They would need to accumulate 11 favor to accomplish acquiring the Vow of Champions this turn, which is definitely possible. I'm not saying it's probable, but it's possible. They go ahead, make the trade onto the avatar of deception i'm curious if they wanted the confused minion to go face or if they were trying to trade it with a minion my guess is they were probably trying to make trade and failed they're going to go ahead and heal up of course in this situation i have them on lysander's mercy all day that is my sole read i can't imagine them having literally any other card i think they have exactly lysander's mercy they're going on the rope here. They just want to stay alive for as long as possible from their perspective. We're actually threatening lethal here if they didn't play the CERN. We could have used our god power right here on the highborn knight and then gone face with the armor lurker and the shade walker and the vow of champions would have been the 10 points of damage we would have needed for lethal. They did have CERN so they healed and yeah that's we're obviously not we don't have lethal here so i mean i kind of expect lysander's mercy but also i want to force it because if if he just plays a second front line and, and i kind of sit here and do nothing i look foolish so that forces the issue they pretty much have to go face and they have to play lysander's mercy right now there is no demogorgon in this format because demogorgon is illegal that is another key card they could have in this situation 
and they just need to play Lysander's Mercy right now. They go ahead and grab the Rune of Life for the heal, and they play the card that I thought they would have in this situation. Get to wait for the animations to go off. Fortunately, our Defiant Farmer was unable to kill himself, because I would have liked the Afterlife to trigger there. Here we go ahead, play the Makeshift Shift. Got no other play. We're obviously threatening lethal. We've got the Vow of Champions in hand, which if our opponent is paying attention, they would be aware of and would remember. They play the Guild Enforcer. Our God Power gets around the Guild Enforcer. They heal themselves for three. However, that doesn't get them out of lethal range. We can play our God Power, go face, and the Vow of Champions will end this game. Game number one goes to fake Mews. In the best of three series, the winner goes on to top eight. Go ahead, let that one finish right there. The victory screen, of course, is bugged. So we're going to go on into game number two. So we won game number one. Now we're thinking that, I'm, I'm, I'm just guessing here. I thought that they would maybe do something super, super controly. And I built an insanely fast aggro list. And, like, that's an expensive hand for my list. I don't think that Chiron is particularly great in this matchup. This is very matchup specific mulliganing, by the way. So, I mean, normally in all circumstances you keep Chiron. But th with this particular list and what I need to do early in this game, it didn't make sense for me. So here... We're going first, so we only have one pip for next turn, and we want to drop the Revenant Lynx, but we can play the Revenant Lynx in either a Jaguar or Volpine Collector next turn. And that's what we're going to go go with. If we don't have the Revenant Lynx there, there's, there's a good chance we just toss out our Jaguar there. So that's what the, the difference between having the Lynx and not having the Lynx in hand. Because we want to get to three. Normally three is kind of an awkward number for nature. Because they generally are lacking of quality plays at three. But this, this deck is, is just going to come out with just insane speed. Opponent has the best two drop in Gods Unchained. Which is indeed Armor Lurker. And that's guaranteed two for one value and at a minimum, two for one value in, in a situation like this. We go ahead, toss out Finian, and a lot of people have sentimental value toward Finian and wouldn't want to play Finian in that situation. The reason why we play Finian is we're guaranteed to get one Apple Boy, and that's all we really need. We see two Switch Duelists from our opponent. That's a solid line from their perspective we would love the hog to trade with the armor lurker it doesn't listen so the lynx ends up having to trade go face and we have the option between vulpine collector and wild hog or just a jaguar the issue i have with a jaguar is it just trades with switch duelist and that's not super satisfying vulpine collector you can get weird things off of temp fate we can guarantee hidden for one turn, or plus one health and hidden if we win a coin flip. We just take the hidden. The reason being is if we don't take hidden, if we just take one, if we get one health, then it just trades with the switch duelist. Opponent has frumentari, so they gain, they draw two cards, which is very key for them, and they're going to go ahead and make trades, which is also key for them. The key, key for us here is we must attack first with Full Pine Collector to see where it goes. And I was hoping that it would run into the Frumentari so I could play the Rabid Bear and make it a 4-5 Rabid Bear. That did not end up happening. So instead, I just decide to go face and go wide as possible here. And it was slightly unfortunate but we're, we're in a little bit of a bind here. If they've got, there's, there's a few things they can have here that would really put us in a bind. And Guild Enforcer is indeed one of them. Now, if we could have drawn Lightning Strike there, we would have not been in that bad of a spot. We don't draw a Lightning Strike, and you can probably tell that we don't have a convenient way to get by Guild Enforcer right now. 
I made my all my confused creatures non-confused. But we still don't kill Guild Enforcer. You could have argued running the Volpine Collector into the Guild Enforcer on that turn. I mean, it doesn't kill it, so it doesn't really accomplish much. Opponent has Bound by Her Will, which, I mean, is always an annoying card. <laughs> but this, this time, they're going to buff Guild Enforcer, which is just absurd. They have a route to basically trade off everything to guarantee that my Selena dies. And killing Selena is is generally a rough a rough spot for us now. So another Volpine Collector, that's not really going to get us anywhere. We buy the Vow of Champions. This is a pure desperation play. Digging for a lightning strike, something to get us out of this spot. And we get a card that is of no use to us. So we're just going to go ahead, hit the God Power button, and play a Beetle. That doesn't really accomplish anything. We're basically getting hammered here. They go ahead and just expand upon their board. Another Frumentari, another, another minion. So they draw two more cards in addition to what they already had. And why do I get Trial of the Hydra, which... You know, Trial of the Hydra is great if you have a wide board of stuff with region that are also wild. It's not as great in this situation. We decide to tempt fate with the Fox Pup because why not? And the reason why not is I didn't watch my own Toxic Storytime Thursday about the Fox Pup that tempted fate. It, it, it did not end well. It did not end well. You go to the casino and the, the struggle is real. So we are not really accomplishing much anything on board. As long as our opponent just takes care of our board, we can't get value out of Trial of the Hydra basically ever. And they drop a second Guild Enforcer and he ex keep expanding wide. They go ahead and make trade. And at around this point, it's optimal to concede. If they're just going to keep control of the board, I don't have any board wipes in my list. I don't have a card that costs more than five. Trial of the Hydra is the most expensive card in the deck of this particular list. So I sit here, I contemplate conceding. If you've been watching the chess coverage of the candidates tournament, they talk about thinking about conceding. And I, I eventually do, do hit the concede button in that situation. So now we're in game number three, the deciding game of the match of course we get area 311 that means i have a diamond card in my deck which is not diamond because the game is bugged that's that's my theory your theories may be different but everything shows is meteorite i mean not meteorite it's plain even so so this is a, a unique opportunity to play with plain genesis cards because normally you wouldn't get to get to play with a deck full of those We've got a lot of ramp in our opening hand. We would like to get Dralimar. I'm playing Dralimar OTK. You see here, our opening hand is ridiculous. We've got ramp. We've got Dralimar. We just need to get a form of wisdom, which we do. And we're just set up in, in, in an amazing way this game already. So next turn, we can just sip of Elixir. And then the turn after that, we've got options. Here, we want to go ahead and ramp ourselves here. We could actually double ramp next turn if we would like. That would get us all the way to five and a half. Our opponent plays Cadmos. It has armor, so that makes it very annoying. We go ahead, we draw the form of wisdom. And now we've got to debate on whether or not we want to ramp or not. Two recovered knowledges is just a lot of value. So we're going to go ahead, make one of those recovered knowledges a free spell, and go ahead and end the turn. So we've got the key here. We've got Dralimar, and we've got a zero-cost three-mana spell. Those are the two cards that you need to go off. And basically, we can draw our entire deck. That is the idea behind this deck. 
we go ahead and ramp. Next turn, we can play Dralimar. We should be able to draw our entire deck and win the game. Now, he plays a Guild Enforcer, and this does pose a problem. You notice he's at 30. He's got two armored minions on board. That means we're going to have to get to clicking fast. And we are up against a timer here. We have to play Recovered Knowledge first because it is indeed the first card that we get we just have to play it so just trial trial begins to thin my deck here it doesn't matter what i take i just got to get it out of my hand go ahead form of wisdom to draw another card librarian's prayer allows us to go ahead for c6 so we can go ahead and see the key cards right there we want to get to our ether snaps ether snaps are a key in this game we want to clear space for our ether snaps as well and we need to draw another card to get more ether snaps indeed. And now we can start dealing damage to our opponent. We've got four of those in hand. Now those armored minions are going to slow us down. This is an infinite combo once we get the second magic inks. And we've got a lot of things going. Now we picked up another ether snap. So why not have five ether snaps? Normally we don't have this many. But I figure I need as many as I can get because there's a lot of armored minions on the board as of right now. So we go ahead, just want to, we, we really want to get to the second magic inks here. Go ahead, take a peek here. We don't want to draw the trial begins, it's a dead card. So we go ahead and get to Librarian's Prayer. And Librarian's Prayer will let us search for basically the, the last magic inks in the deck which is the key card for us here. But we have to wait a long time for those ether bugs to get through before it lets us start clicking. And here we can see the second magic inks. Nothing else matters. We just need to get the second magic inks. We need to clear out the rest of our hand and then need to get to clicking. We need speed. We need speed. We need speed. So go ahead. Yeah, do that here. And go ahead and play the ancient text. Got to get the ancient text out of our hand. We want the only two spells in our hand to be magic inks here. Everything goes face. And now it's just all about playing as much spells as possible. The rope on our left is our enemy. It's the only thing that can prevent us from winning this game. This is indeed an infinite combo. Magic inks copies itself. Dralimar refreshes the mana. We can play an infinite number of magic inks as long as time allows it. But what we experience here is we have all of those going straight to the armored minions. This is so frustrating. On average, we should be getting, you know, basically a one in three shot chance five times. So or almost to a, an attempt. And we're getting well less than that, it feels like. The magic ink still copying. We're playing cards as fast as we possibly can, but the animations are slow and the rope is coming. That rope is very fearsome. We're playing them as fast as we can. Now, I've got to keep in mind that there's about two cards that, that have been played that we have queued up that, that are a little bit behind the rope. So it, it, the game is behind how many cards we have played. And keep that in mind because the game is a little bit buggy here at the end. It feels like we're sweating here. We've got them down to six. We need to kill them this turn. Otherwise, they basically win the game because they can heal and we probably won't be able to finish them. And we're just going here, going here, going here. Can we get there? Playing the magic inks as soon as I can, as soon as I can. And now one's going to pop up in hand and it's not going to let me play it. And I think the rope has ended. But the game has ended. The two, two magic inks I had queued up obviously led to lethal and yeah my reaction in the top right of the screen is somebody who is happy to go to the final four and that does it i hope you enjoyed this video if you like the format say so if you dislike the format yell at me for coming up with this format in a totally non-accidental manner that was very well, well planned and very well thought out of Anyways, I hope you all have a great day and make sure to watch the final four coverage on TST's Bonk That channel when we have it. I believe we're going to be trying to have this at Saturday at around 2 p.m. Eastern time. 
However, I've also heard other people not wanting to play on Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So with that, I hope you all have a great day and that will end this video.